Tonight on the House of Tiny Tearaways. You do not throw your fork. I want this. It's upset you because of what I'm doing to his body. It's the start of a new day at the House of Tiny Tearaways and for our three families their hard work is beginning to pay off. But at the halfway mark the pressure remains on Tanya to capitalise on the progress she's made so far. <laughs> three desperate families, each overwhelmed by parenting problems that have turned their toddlers into tearaways. Can we eat a little bit of carrot then? No. They're going to be living here for just six days in the hope that they can turn their lives around. The person they're looking to for the answers is clinical psychologist Dr Tanya Byron. Working with three families in such an intense environment is unlike anything I've ever done professionally before and it is a huge challenge. I'm working with the parents, I'm working with their children and I'm building a community. It's a tough job to do in a very, very short space of time. And for the families selected to be part of this programme, this is make or break. This is the House of Tiny Tearaways. It's early morning. Are, Cheryl, what? James and Matthew care. Howan are chatting in the lounge whilst their children, sure. Ben and Jordan, enjoy some playtime. Last, Last night, night I was like, like well, he's, he's not, not eating, eating enough. enough. He's going to start losing weight, you know, and when we go home, I know that's going to be a major panic for me. Can't allow him to lose too much weight, no. Get a big No, you don't. But are you, do you want some brekkie? No. You're not hungry yet? Yes. You are hungry? I Ben James is food phobic and his restricted diet of baby food, crisps and sweets have left Mum Cheryl fearing for his health. To help tackle Ben's phobia, Tony has encouraged messy food play and asked his anxious mum to take a step back at mealtimes. The results have been small but significant, with Ben trying cheese and carrot for the oh, first time. But can Cheryl have like similar success keeping her anxiety boy. under control today? Hey. Here you go, Mae. There you go. This bread. And that's toast and butter. Do you want to see me actually staring watching at him? But I know, I'll pretend I'm doing some drawing. <laughs> wow, oh, you. Adam? I want drink. You can have a drink of milk with your toast. Tell you what, what while I get your milk, can you eat mummy a bit of toast up, please? No. Do you reckon he might do it while mummy's not looking? Yeah. While mummy's getting her milk out of the fridge? Uh. Do you think he might? He's not Stop looking. Can my cup? Are you a crocodile? No, he can't, can he? No, not while his mummy's not looking, what do you think? <laughs> Did I hear a da da? Did you? Did you eat the bread or the toast? Ben, how about try some try some your toast, darling? Mum, yeah. Mum, want pop? No, darling, you don't have pop at breakfast anyway. Do you want some cheese spread on it? Pop! <laughs> what have you got? Do you want some cheese spread on it? Do you want some cheese bread? <laughs> Two and a half year old Kean Archer is waking after sleeping for almost 13 hours. Hello. Hello. Oh, what a good boy you are. What a good boy you've been. Mm -hmm. yeah, you slept all in your bed on your own. 
Shane and Sarah Archer were desperate for help with two and a half year old Kian's erratic sleep pattern. Not only would he refuse to go to sleep in his own bed, he would then wake continuously throughout the night. Following a series of successful nights using the rapid return technique, Tony persuaded Shane and Sarah to swap Kian's toy bed for a big toy bed. Perseverance and their new settling routine saw Kian through this considerable transition and he slept soundly in his new bed. However, as Kian's sleep patterns improves, Mum Sarah has yet to lose her anxiety over settling her son. Do you like your new bed? Is it nice, your new bed? Is it comfy? Was it dead, dead comfy and snuggly in there? Was it? Oh. God. Did Ted like it as well? It's a big boy's bed. Did Ted it? like it as well? Did he? I liked it. He liked, he liked it. it. Yeah. Because it was a big boy's bed, wasn't it? A boy's bed. Yeah, because you're in a big boy's bed, aren't you now? <laughs> <laughs> the archers arrived. Kian had such a big sleep problem that every night almost his parents would have to put him in the car and drive him around the area. How did he sleep last night? Like a dream really. Um, he woke four times and each time he only had to be returned to bed once, that was during the night. It was Sarah's turn to put him to bed last night but then she stood in the corridor later on that night just sobbing. Why is it so hard for her, the idea that he is sleeping in his own big boy bed? Because it's about separation from her baby, and I think she really acknowledges that, but I, I still think just an acknowledgement and one chat isn't going to yeah. change you know, the way you feel. What are your plans for the archers today? Um, I'm going to set up a risky play activity uh, for Kian. Risky play is about exposing Kian to the kind of activity that I think a toddler of his age should be wanting to do. The other two boys would. Uh, Kian is very stand back, very shy, very anxious, very holding on to his parents. So it's about Shane encouraging Kian. It's then asking Sarah to watch it and to look at how stressed she gets by it because I think again it's further information for her about her overprotectiveness and her anxiety. Mm. Just give you die off. <coughs> Please. <laughs> Lovely there you go. Wow, how hot is that? Right, I'll come back and give you another push in a minute. Cheryl James and Claire Howen are keeping a watchful eye on sons Ben and Jordan. Son, the sun's coming out for me. My trousers wet. I need them on. Come with mummy. Come on. <laughs> Jordan, look at mummy. Yeah. You do not wee in the garden. No. Come on. The Howans arrived at the house struggling to cope with three-year-old Jordan's severe tantrums and aggressive outbursts. Yeah. Behaviour that forced Tanya to get tough from the start. Because I cannot let these two get beaten and he gets no consequence. Yesterday, Tanya tested Mum, Claire and Dad Matthew with a trip to the park. While they enjoyed some success be. distracting Jordan from any that. bad behaviour, Tanya feels they still wow. need to be more assertive and teach Jordan that no really means no. If you have some sandwich, you can have a sausage. Earlier in the week, Tanya gave the Howans a sticker Me chart to encourage oh, no. Jordan to use the bathroom yeah. rather than the garden when he come needs see. to go to the toilet. See. Jordan, come here. Look, you get across. Why'd you get a cross? Because you've done... A sticker. No, you don't get a sticker because you've done a wee in the... Toilet. No, you've done a wee in the... You've done a wee in the garden, haven't you? So you don't get a sticker, you get a cross, OK? You've got a cross. No sticker because you don't do a wee in the garden. I'm not... Just fall out. 
We've been watching the Howans. How are they doing with son Jordan, who came in here and was, I think we agreed, the worst behaved child ever to be in the House of Tiny Tearaways? On Sunday, but then on Monday, the best. Yeah. <laughs> Carrying on most of yesterday, even on an outing, which was quite challenging. Uh, Claire and Matt are doing lots of positive play, and yesterday I asked them to think about being a little bit more assertive and decisive and not trying to negotiate him round all the time. So I want to see more of that today. But today I really want to talk to them about nutrition. There are links with um, behaviour, behaviour problems right. in terms of diet. His diet is very protein heavy and there's an awful, awful lot of saturated fat in his diet. I think they also really, really need to think about the fact that they use food to bribe him, to treat him, to reward him. And I think they need a lot of thinking around what he eats and how he eats. Cheryl James takes a moment to get ready for the day ahead. Her three-year-old son, Ben, joins Sarah and Kean Archer at the dining table while they have their breakfast. And Kean is keen to share his tangerine, a fruit that Ben has never tasted before. Go on. Go on, mate. Get it in there. Bite it. Suck it. Good boy. Oh. You see, there is the face of a child who is truly experiencing new tastes for the first Very time. First, huh? When you think that he's three and he's, this is a, a complete new taste and texture experience for him, you see how restricted his diet has become. Also, when you look at Tantri, it is a strange texture. It is a weird, because it's got the pith on it and it sort of feels a bit plasticky. I mean, it's quite strange to watch him. Yeah. Have you ever come across such an eating problem where if, if the parent's away, the child is willing to smell, play, have a feel, and the minute the parent comes in, they stop? It's never been as stark as I think it is with Ben and Cheryl. We've seen it in other ones um, in the house, yeah. but never this stark which is fascinating for me. It must be pretty heartbreaking for Cheryl to think that as she, she walks away from her, kid he eats. Yeah. She's with him and he stops. Go on, darling. Go on, go on. But Sarah Archer, who was very clingy with her son earlier, has been quite good in the fact that she's looking away and the two of them are just sort of sitting there getting on with it. Look at him. He wants to, but he's really just giving himself time and space. Today is really, really critical, and that's why I'm, I'm going to send them out. Where are you going to send them? I'm going to send them fruit picking, um, which for me has a number of uses. Number one, it's a bit cold and damp today, and the fruit will be a bit slimy, and it's the end of the fruit season, so lots of squadgy, messy, fruity picking behaviour and we know that both Cheryl and Ben have issues with things on their hands and she has to wipe him a million times. What happens if her anxiety just gets worse? Then the progress that she's made will just reverse. Mm. Here comes Mum. Thank you guys. Hi. Hello Owen! Hello Owen! Hi! Hey, what a big boy! I think you can have a sticker for that, do not you? And me. Hey? <laughs> I think Ben deserves a sticker for that. Hey, nice one, you see, that's really good. Yeah, we do that one later. This one's just a sticker for Ben's t-shirt for sitting at the table like a big boy and having some orange in front of him. There you go, you put it wherever you want to. You can even stick it on your orange if you want to. Yeah, you can stick it on your orange if you want to, mate. Come on, Nico. So cheers. Tony meets with Cheryl Before James following them. Ben's breakthrough right. last well, night when he ate What's carrot for the, the first moment? time during uh, dinner. You love the, the feedback, so I've got something to show yes. you, which I have yeah. to say okay. warmed my heart yeah. very much this morning. Absolutely right. That, so. I can hear them saying, can Ben eat that little, little teeny, weeny, weeny piece of carrot that Mummy's going to put on that floor? Well, yeah. That's his anxiety there. Yeah. Oh, finished. 
care. I'm going to sleep in the world. Yeah, you have a bite and see if then you can go on the train. Like an orange <gasps> orange. He didn't do it, did he, Sarah? He's not nice one. one. They're big bites as well. Big bites, big bites. Yeah. Oh, he didn't, didn't do it. Yeah. What? He ate a piece of carrot. Mm. What did you like about what you saw there, apart from the fact um, your son ate carrot? The anxiety was there, but definitely less. Yeah. I could see there was definitely less. To be fair on you, your problem is very, very time specific. It's the meal times. Yeah, it is. And I can yeah. see that just before meal time, you start to get a little bit manic. Yeah. You are seeing that he is eating more and more every day. I mean, as you say, those bites of carrot. If you They're think about the I nibble thought. that yeah. he did of that apple on the first yeah. day, it was like a shaving with his tooth. Yeah. We are seeing progress, but it's not progress in the sense that he's eating a volume. Yeah. Now, obviously, that is worrying for you. It's worrying for all parents. Yeah. What you have to know is I know he will increase his volume quite soon, okay. but you may see some small weight loss. OK, well, that's fine by me. I'm just worrying that the weight loss will be massive. What I noticed about you is that you are flooded with negative thoughts. Yeah. And I saw that at breakfast. I'll, I'll just talk you through breakfast sure, quickly. I, I was kind of all right. 140 comments you made about food in 28 You're minutes. You're kidding. Can Ben eat some toast while Mummy gets him some milk? Eat some bread up. Try some of your toast. Have a little bite of your bread then. Put some cheese bread on it. How about a bite of your toast? Try some of your toast, darling. Do you want some cheese bread? Do you want some cheese bread? Eat your bread up then, then. The key thing we've learned is when you're not there, he does really well. Yeah. So what you've got to learn is to be there and not be there at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Um, so I want to give you a rubber band right. to put round your wrist. And every time you can feel your anxiety rising, just twang it. Right. And just say, look, Cheryl, he is now doing, and then talk yourself through he's everything doing. he's, he's doing. He's not having them baby jars, he's feeding himself. Like, yeah, yeah. So the rubber band is really just to get you to kind of kick yourself yeah. back into... To the other, to yeah. positive. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the outing. Yeah. You and Ben are going to go fruit picking. All right. Blackberries, oh. raspberries. Oh. So yeah, what I've done is have, I've yeah. put together all the stuff I know you love, you're a very interactive, hands-on mum, in a place that I don't think is going to be too threatening, but no, it does offer not. us up the opportunity of mess. Of still mess. Possibly but in the mouth. Not extreme mess. <laughs> yeah. And will you feel comfortable if he takes it off a bush and puts it in his mouth, or will you be going, no, no, I've got to wash it, I've got to wash it? No, because I'm going to twang that band. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to twang that band, and we'll see what kind of level of indentation okay. you have when you get home. As Cheryl and Ben set off on their day out, <laughs> Claire and Matthew Howen are looking after son Jordan and two and a half year old Kean Archer. No, you're not allowed in the kitchen, Jordan. No. No. Jordan. No. Jordan. Jordan. Jordan, look at Mummy, please. Yeah. You do not throw your toys. No. No. Can I have an apology, please? Yeah. Well then, what was that? What did you say to Daddy? Are you sorry? Sorry. Sorry. I'm a big boy. Well, big boys don't throw their toys, do they? No. no. Jordan, right. did you want this last bit of apple? After another remarkable bedtime last night, Shane and Sarah Archer joined Tanya in the consultation room. You came in with a sleep problem. Mm. Do you have a child with a sleep problem? No. No. No. no. It's, I've never had a sleep problem turn around so quickly. No. It's extraordinary. Yeah. Um. And your son had to be returned to bed only four times last night. Once when you put him to bed, yeah. and then three times in the yeah. night. Yeah. Tonight, if he wakes in the night and he comes and stands by your bed, could you just say, back to bed, son, good night, darling, and just see if he'll take himself back? Because mm -hmm. he probably will. How about you, Sarah? Sleep? Yeah, I'm, I'm amazed with, with how he's done. And, like, this morning he woke up happy. What I did notice, Sarah, is that you, you did put him to bed and you did brilliantly, but then you, you cried, yeah, yeah. didn't you, in the hallway yeah. last yeah. night? I think it's a fact of not going back and checking on him. When I put him back in, he was sort of struggling mm. and I didn't know whether he was on the edge or where he was. Mm. 
and I think it's just a fact of a bit of reassurance for me. Mm -hmm. I just need to sort of poke my head round and think, yeah, he's all right. And I was very proud of you because you've really taken to heart so much of what we've been talking yeah. about and you're now recognising that you have to deal with your emotion yeah. Yeah. separate yeah. to your son. And, OK, so yeah. you were sobbing in the hall, but the point is you were not standing yeah, over him, him kind of... Yeah, I did it where he wouldn't see me, yeah. The reason I, I'm anxious about saying to you, yes, OK, you, of course you couldn't pop yeah. your head around the door, is because when he's in bed, yeah. where should you be now spending your time? Downstairs and... With? Shame. With your man? Yeah. So I'm really um, nervous that what we'll have is he'll sleep well, but you'll be up, up there down, hovering. Up and, yeah. Mm. And he'll still, Shane yeah. will still have lost you. Yeah. Well, there are two things I want to talk to you about. So I want to talk to you about the activity today, and I want to talk to you about a little just to finish off the conversation we're having, which is yeah. about your feelings about yourself as a mother, about yourself as a woman. Yeah. And I've got two pieces of film I want you to watch, which for me I think perfectly highlight exactly what what the issue is. Yeah. So we'll just we'll just play it in there. Yay! Yay! Yeah. Very good. Special train. Did you Ian's not that impressed. You're going to you get a because you've been a really <laughs> good boy. Yay! Fuck <laughs> it. Oh. Who's turn? Ben! Come on! Yay! Yeah. You don't need any help. That was the train ride from yesterday yeah. morning. Mm -hmm. You could see, just developmentally, particularly seeing little Ben run over afterwards yeah. without his mum, how there is yeah. this dynamic set up of you can't let go of me, yeah. I can't let go of you. Yeah. There is that dynamic between the two of you, which is almost, he has to show a scrap of anxiety and you're there by his side. Yeah. Mm. So I, I yeah. just wanted you yeah. to see that. Now yeah. have a look at another piece of footage from yesterday, which for me was just brilliant, actually. Let's see if you can spot the difference. Mm -hmm. Eat some new cheese spread. Show me how you can eat your cheese spread. Fish. See if we can eat all this bit by the time Mummy gets back. Oh, doesn't matter. So your behaviour in the first clip, we acknowledged, yeah. was kind of anxious and stiff yeah. and right over him and in his face. What did you see you do there? Because obviously, like, it's not my child and I'm not sort of emotionally attached to it, I could just get on with just like helping him to feed and that. It was almost like a different yeah. woman. A different yeah. woman. Yeah. I suppose I want to say to you, you can do it so well with yeah. someone else's child. You helped a little boy who has major feeding problems, yeah. he really does. That was so much because you were calm and in control yeah. and kind and just there. Yeah. Whereas I feel f with Kian, because every whimper and yeah. you're there and anxious and then, by his side, yeah. you're turning him into quite an anxious little yeah. boy yeah. when he's with you. Yeah. I just don't know how to stop it. What is it that you've both done that's got your kid within two nights basically sleeping? Because we've just let him cry and just let him get on with it. Yeah. And um, walked away and absolutely. just leave him. And so as a parent, what kind of parent have you presented to him? A, a stronger, firmer. Um, yeah, absolutely. don't mess with me sort of thing. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. in charge. We're in charge. We're in charge. We're in charge. Mm. Yeah. It's that easy, but for you it's a massive emotional yeah. leap. It's like mm. jumping from one yeah. ledge to another, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think it's a big risk for you emotionally. Mm. Yeah. How do you feel about me bringing in an activity this afternoon for Kian that would involve some risk? Fine. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. It's a fun activity, but it's the sort of thing that I think Kian would approach with caution. Mm. What I want to do with it is I want to set it up so that, Shane, you're kind of being with him, having a nice mm. time, but I want us to watch it together, yeah. and I want to measure your stress levels as we watch it, because for me it'd be quite interesting, I yeah. think, for you and for yeah. you to see yeah. what is it that's making you the most yeah. anxious. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so are you happy for that? Yeah, yeah I'm fine. Yeah. You could have kittens. <laughs> It's lunchtime and Matthew and Claire Howan have prepared a meal of pasta, tuna, sweet corn and potatoes for son Jordan. If I close my eyes, where's that pasta going to go? Where's that pasta gone? 
You did not eat that pasta. Daddy. Yeah. Jordan just tried a bit of pasta. No, he didn't. Did he? Did Jordan try it? Jordan, use your spoon, darling. Thank yeah. you very much. The Howans are changed people because I, they just play with their son all the time. They praise him. He's saying hooray for no reason. Uh, you must be delighted. I am delighted. Um, my focus with them is shifting onto diet and nutrition. And actually, as we're talking, I'm looking at a meal time, um, which is being managed really, really beautifully by Claire with lots of positive interaction, lots of smiles, lots of paradoxical interventions. Don't eat it, don't eat it. Um, but I am kind of quite taken by the size of the portion. What kind of portion, just so people are watching and know, should he be eating? Well, generally, your stomach is the size of your fist. So if you curl up his little fist, I mean, his fists are a bit bigger than maybe another child of his age because he is at the more weighty end of the scale. But really, I think he could eat half or two thirds of that portion. Jordan, who's that all your dinner? Me. No, really. Jordan, can you use your fork, please, darling? Mm, yeah. Use mm. your fork like mummy and daddy, please. Thank you. Well done. That's tuna. Would you like to try some tuna? Uh, I have tuna. I want tuna. Okay, don't speak with food in your mouth, pub. It's the midway point of the week, and although there's been great success, there is still much to be resolved. Three-year-old Ben James' food phobia has made Mum Cheryl increasingly anxious at mealtimes. Although the week has seen progress for Ben, Cheryl is still struggling to keep her anxiety at bay, which is a concern for Tania as it's hindering further resolution of the problem. Jordan Howe's tantrums and aggressive outbursts had torn his parents' relationship apart. With Tanya's help, there's been considerable change in Jordan's behaviour, with Mum Claire and Dad Matthew's more confident approach bringing significant results. However, concerns still remain that Jordan's progress will be difficult to maintain at home, where Mum and Dad's fragile relationship is once again exposed to the stresses of real life. You do not wee in the garden. Shane and Sarah Archer were close to exhaustion as they desperately struggled to get Sun Kian to settle at bedtimes. Sticking to a rapid return technique at night has paid incredible dividends, with Kian settling quicker and hardly waking at all. However, this progress has exposed Mum Sarah's difficulty in separating from Kian, and Tanya must now help Sarah overcome her anxiety if the Archer's success is to be sustained. Still to come. And you can have salt. And I will get you some salt. Jordan. Today we're going to go fruit picking. Raspberries, blackberries, strawberries. My normal reaction to this is instantly wipe it off. There's always a packet of wipes in my day out bag, so I've taken them out. Cheryl must first learn to control her anxieties. To help with this, Tani has given her an elastic band which she must pull as a symbolic reminder to block out negative thoughts. When I was told we was coming for a day out, I was extremely anxious about it. At the moment, I'm feeling okay. Before we came in the house, he was very anxious about mess. You know, I've made him so sensitive about yuck. I've made this problem. Oh no, <laughs> mud. It is very muddy then, isn't it? <laughs> Thank goodness for Alice. Uh, no, that's a massive, huge, deep puddle and Benjamin will disappear and, and all we'll hear is a big splosh and a big bang. Because <laughs> he's just doing this on his own. I haven't even shown him yet, see? There's a whopper doobie one there. Ooh, oh, I, I got know. a little dizzy yeah. one. Here's some more. You don't chuck the big fat juicy ones away, darling. We put the big fat juicy ones in there. These are blackberries, they're the same as raspberries, but a different colour, aren't they? Uh, I'll, I'll pull the tree down, you I'll pick cuddle. it. Oh, cuddle. Oh. Why, what's the matter? Uh, go home. You want to go home? Uh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, oh, no. uh, <laughs> look at it, look, it's like painting. Should we draw a picture in it? Ready? Now you can draw a picture, look. 
Who should we draw? Jessie. Should we draw Jessie? Can Ben help me draw Jessie, do you think? Yeah. There's Jessie's head. Look. Look. You can make pictures out of it. For him, this this is good. This is great. He's actually touching it. Actually, to be honest, my first instinct was, oh my God, that really stains. But then I kind of thought, no, no, there's, that's just my anxiety, you know, levels. Keep them low, keep them low. He's more important. He's, he's much more important, you know. Come on, Pops. Do you want to have a feel of a strawberry? No. Licking it. Come on, let's find some more big fat juicy ones because you're losing enthusiasm, aren't you now? This is where I get anxious, when the enthusiasm stops. When it's all going good, I'm okay. When the, it stops going good, I start getting anxious and then it's a big builder. Oh, it's all right. Look at Mr. Crocodile, look how dirty he is. Look how happy he is. I've let him splash in puddles, but clean ones that are on clean <laughs> This sounds awful, Danny. Uh. Mummy do a splash. As long as it doesn't go up on my <laughs> They're expensive jeans, but they can be washed. They're expensive jeans, but they can be washed. How happy is he? And because he's happy, I'm happy. Oh Will Cheryl be able to keep control of her anxiety for the next part of Tanya's exercise? What's that? Oh. The Since coming to the house, Sarah Archer has struggled to conquer her overprotectiveness of two and a half year old son, Kian. What do you look like? Tanya has set up a special activity for Kian and Dad, Shane, which Mum will observe. Shane simply has to lead Kian across a pole that has a safety cushion underneath. But while the activity is perfectly safe, it also has an element of risk. Tanya is using a galvanic skin response monitor which reads changes in the electrical conductivity of the skin affected by stress. This will measure how Sarah manages her emotions while she watches her son. See if you can stand up then. Stand up and hold my hand. OK, so you're 53, which is your resting rate, yes? 53. 54, 55. See if you can come across. Come on. Come on, you're all right. You're all right, honestly. Come on, you're all right. You're all right, honestly. 51. You're not that anxious, are you? No. Come on, let go. So I've got you now. Come on across, see if you can get to this line. See if you can get to this line. Come on. You're all right. Good boy. Well done. Hey! You've dropped 10. Why do you think you became less anxious? Because I know he's so all right. Like now, I know he's just being silly. You know he's being silly? Yeah. But on Sunday, if we'd done this, what, what would have happened? If I'd said, OK, it's raining, it's slippery, there's a protective helmet, put your I know, I'd have probably been there with him. Would you? Yeah. But, like, I know that he can... He'd do it. And he's just being silly. We laugh at it. <laughs> we laugh. But now I look at that and I think, well, why is he being so silly? Well, we've tried to let him do things. Right, yeah. And he just doesn't, like, keep saying, I would have never thought it was us holding him back. Can you see that now? Yeah. Why don't you go out and show him? Because he's going, I don't want to, I don't want to. Why don't you go out and say, listen, Mummy's yeah. going to show you. Yeah. yeah. How do you know? Oh, look who's this. I'm going to have a go. I'm going to stand up there. Yeah. I am. <laughs> you come up here with me. Go up there, Mum. <laughs> We'll decide when you've had enough. <laughs> She's a changed woman. No, Look at Mummy. I'm going to get some stuff. Yeah? The second part of Tanya's exercise for Cheryl is to take Ben to a farm shop to buy vegetables straight from the fields. How will Cheryl and Ben handle this unfamiliar, messy food? Laura said these are the best ones. But should, which ones does Ben want? This one. Here you go, Ben. Can you put it in the bag? Thank you. Which one should we have? This one. Or this one? This one. Right, can you go and give that to Laura for me? Thank you. Grab us a beetroot and then we can get some pumpkins and see the spiders. Grab us a beetroot, please. Thanks, mate. Look, 
Look at the pumpkins. That's what we're going to do when we get back. We're going to make one of them. He's absolutely amazed, isn't he? The farm produce went swimmingly. He had absolutely no problem whatsoever. He was straight in there with the potato, both the types of potato, beetroot, and the funny shaped thing, whatever it was called. No problem. And then he just said earlier, back there, go back to Tanya's house. He's having the best day. He is having a great day. Whilst Matthew and Claire Howan have made some progress in halting son Jordan's aggressive tantrums, another important aspect right. of his upbringing is giving Tanya cause for concern, right. something she's keen to address here. with Matthew and Claire. OK, what do you think we're going to talk about now? Jordan's at... Um, Jordan's... Diet. diet. That's right, yeah. We're going to talk about his diet. Do you have concerns about his diet? Yeah. Yes. Tell me what your concerns are. I think um, the lack of the food he's eating and the things that he is eating a lot of. Right. And all the wrong things. Right, OK. Yeah. So what we need to do is think about what is he eating, what should he be eating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, how, what do you feel about his weight? I, I think he's too here. He's too... He's just piling on the... The weight and he's it's all just staying here mm. and he's looking like me every day <laughs> okay why, why that concerns me is that children who become overweight very young tend to stay overweight yeah. that okay. has implications for them in terms of health yeah. and and also i notice for example when he runs because his legs are quite chunky, he's not running Probably. as fast as he could yeah. be. So, so it's all those kinds of issues. Right, well, I've put together some plates of different food groups. We've got a plate of carbohydrates here. Then we've got fruits and vegetables uh -huh. here. And over here, we have got protein. Do you think what you could do, if I put it there, put on this platter what you think he eats. So put them in so I can see the sort of proportion of what he's eating every day. So you've got your... Proteins. Yeah. Do you want me to help you? What else? Here. Yogurts he eats lots of. He eats lots of lots of sausages. To put another one on or not? Um yeah. He'll have two bananas a day. He'll eat what how many bananas a day? Two. He eats two bananas a yeah. day. Mm -hmm. Put a few grapes um, in as well, because he will a eat few grapes, grapes now and with again. his tea that I put in his lunch box, yeah. Does he eat burgers? Mm, not really. no. Doesn't like chicken. No. Nope. Cheese spread. No. Nope. Beef. No. Nope. Fish fingers. Fish, he yeah, does eat fish fingers. fingers. We're not like an excessive amount because mm. he's not. Should I put a couple in there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to stick it here away from the others, but just having a a look. Mm -hmm. What do you What do you think about that as a sort of a, a sort of diet for a child? We're looking at proportions mm -hmm. of of foods. Do you think that's awful? You think it's awful? Awful, that is. To yeah. look at that like that. What are you seeing? Oh, don't worry. No, it's all right. Don't worry. No, don't worry. Oh, sweetheart. OK, well, it's upset you because... Of what I'm doing to his body. Well, you're very honest. You're very honest. And there are some good things on there, but there's an awful lot of things that we need to adjust. But why don't we start to do that now? What do you think? Yeah. Because. You haven't known this, and I haven't told you because I didn't want you to change your behaviour, but I've actually been, every day I've been plotting what he's eaten. So I've put together my own platter of what I think he should be eating in terms of the proportions. This is, this is I think, what we need to be aiming towards, but this is what he's, he's having. The first thing I just want to say to you is proteins here. Mm -hmm. Right. Proteins are important for muscle growth mm -hmm. at his age and also that they are also important for bone and teeth development, particularly vitamin D in your, in your proteins. But okay. it's very important to have a kind of a balance of protein against carbs and, and fruits and vegetables and he does have a huge amount of protein in his diet. So we've got the carbs over here. Carbohydrate helps the breakdown of other foods to release energy. Mm. So children who don't eat enough carbohydrate actually don't have very much energy. But if we look at the amount of carbs compared to the amount of protein, mm -hmm. he's not eating enough carbs against his protein intake. Mm -hmm. So he has a dip in energy. 
Yeah. Now, what a lot of parents do, and I think what's been happening with you, is that he then drinks drinks like this, drinks like this that are very sugary. Now, these give children energy, but in a very superficial way. And what happens is that it cranks up their energy, and then they get a massive crash, because it's not like a carbohydrate yeah. that will slowly allow the breakdown of the foods to release energy over a long period. <coughs> the amount of fat that Jordan eats is about 25% of his diet. That means he's having two thirds more fat in his diet than he should do. Mm. That's a lot. Which also helps explain his, his weight mm. as well. The amount of protein that he's having in his diet is um, also 25, this is 25% more than he should have. And in terms of carbohydrates, which we accept are essential because it helps with the breakdown of food, it helps with digestion, he's getting 20% too little carbohydrate in his diet. So what we need to do is start to balance it. The other thing I just want to tell you is that I have taken a photograph of last night's meal that you served him. So this was his portion last night. Mm -hmm. That's an adult dinner plate and that's an adult portion and he ate just over two thirds of that. So really what I want to reveal to you is really what a child of his age should be eating in terms of quantity per meal. Can you see there's <laughs> quite a difference. Now obviously to go from that to that is going to be a big shift. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to ask you to do, I'd like to ask you to look at his diet and just think about how you can slowly substitute things in and take things out. I'm not saying that you don't, you know, you don't ever give him this. You know, he can have fries on Friday or whatever. It's about balance. So it's not just about, you know, being fashionable with food. It's about really thinking about what goes into his body. Yeah. When we walked in, as soon as I saw that, I tried, I thought, Christ, it's children's dinner. Mm. That is, that's what he eats. It, it answers all the questions about all the previous problems, and it's just to walk in and see all that, I think, that's what my son eats. I feel like you feel like I'm telling you off. Mm -hmm. huh? I'm just trying to take all this in in my little mind. It's not little. It is. <laughs> it's not little. <laughs> and just think of things that I can do and make it better for Jordan. He is overweight, but that can be remedied. What I will say to you is, I really grappled with whether or not to do this with you because I knew it would be quite a shock. And I tell you, the reason I've done it is because you have amazed me this week. You've done that. So if you can do that, you can do this. You can. <laughs> Cheryl and Ben James ben. return from their fruit picking trip. Come on, trip. Are you going in that door, Mr Independent? Hello. Come on, Ben. Come and put your strawberries in the what kitchen. What have you got? We've got you pumpkins, strawberries, raspberries. Way. Go and play on the cars and that's where we are. Ben, a big thumbs up for you, mate. A huge thumbs up. Yes. Oh, I'm so, honestly, I'm so tired. I really am. That Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Hey, your hands. <laughs> How are we here? Not the, the, the elastic band that I got was a little tight. That's the flicking mark. Uh, looks like there's bit, there was a bit of flicking. Yeah, there was. So it works a treat. It it's it's it quite good, isn't it? It works a treat. Yeah, there was a lot of pinging to start off with, but on the way back in the car, I said, I can't remember when the last well, I said, I can't remember when the last twanged. <laughs> can't remember. We call it twanging. So you first of all obviously did pick some fruit. Yes. And that how did that was go? Squishing in the... much better than I expected. Really? Much, much for better. For whom? For Ben? For you? For both of you? For both of us. He asked for dinner. He wanted dinner. He asked for cheese bread. He asked for it, and I thought, oh no, we've got to do the strawberries yet. We've got to do the strawberries yet. And I was getting a bit anxious again. And we picked the strawberries. And he, I said, give the strawberry a kiss, Ben. And he kissed it and then licked it. No! I didn't ask him to lick it, he just licked it. He had no sensory at all. No sensory fear at all. Brilliant. None. What was because he seeing? He was seeing mummy with no sensory fear. Brilliant. Brilliant. And I, had, I jumped in puddle. Oh, I nearly cried, actually. Why? Because my son was so happy that he was jumping in these muddy puddles, which is what 
three-year-old kids want to do, isn't it? It's and it was great because I was really worried leaving all my support because of going home on Friday. But that gave me that boost because it was me and Ben. And we can do it. Absolutely! We can do it. Alleluia! After discussing Jordan's diet, Matthew and Claire put Tani's advice into practice straight away, preparing Jordan a meal of rice, cauliflower cheese, chicken and carrots. It tastes a bit funny, don't you? Blow it then. Mm, might just be and carrots. Yeah. Well, they've been boiled, so there shouldn't be a problem. <coughs> Earlier, Tanya asked Sarah to take charge of putting Sun Key into bed for the second night running. Told you, dug yourself. Last night, she settled him in record time, returning him to Mind bed just to once. To him, I can't believe I've got to go through it tonight again. I can't. You were more than capable of doing that stuff. I know, but I just, because I'm just, like I say, I think I was thinking I've done it. That's it. It'll be Shane again tonight. You know what I mean? That, that's what I was hoping. To be honest with you, I mean, once you put him down, it wakes up if you can't be bothered. You know, it's not that I can't be bothered. Yeah, it's but still, it's like still it. talks at me here. Oh. I know, I can't help it. Yeah, I know you can't help it. I'm not criticising it. Criticising it. Honestly, it's. Whilst their parents prepared dinner, Jordan and Ben played together. Yes, I know you hit Jordan and it's naughty, isn't it? Hey? It's naughty, isn't it? No. Now you have to have now you have to go. No, yeah. Now you go time out because you're for hitting Jordan and throwing toys. Hey! but you do not break the train track up when all your friends are playing with it. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Have you got a poorly? Show me. <laughs> oh, I'll be glad when you're in bed tonight, Jordan. Come on. You're Do so tired. After a three-minute timeout, Ben is allowed out of his room. Sorry, sorry in a minute. <sighs> sorry, Jordan. Sit on the table, mate. Oh, Mummy's done your chips. Ben, say sorry to Jordan. Good boy, Ben. Now go and sit at the table for me, Joan. It's dinner time well, in the house yeah, and Cheryl is giving Ben that. chips and carrots. Yeah, yeah, Although Cheryl has recognised her anxiety concerning Ben's kids. problems with eating, she Good still struggled to relax toys. around her son at mealtimes. Come on then, eat some of your dinner. But there are he's no chips tired. for Jordan tonight. tonight. Claire and Matthew are now giving tired. him a much smaller portion oh, and have replaced so fatty tired. foods with rice and plenty of vegetables. <coughs> we know that's not going to happen, so... Oh, yeah. okay, there we go. Thanks, darling. It's really nice. One Jordy dinner. I want some chips. Blow it off. We haven't got chips. That's your dinner. I know. Oh, my knee's going to kick off. Right, you sit down, yeah? Um, Listen to me. Yeah. I've given you pop, yeah? If you, because you're eating your dinner like a big boy. Um, we can have yeah. chips another night. <coughs> Next year. Everyone around, but around me is going to be like this. <laughs> Look, Ben's got carrots just like you. Yeah. yeah. I was 
İyi den ha. İngilizce hem. İngilizce. Anne, other one. Other one. Other one. Other one. If you eat some of that, you can have some. Listen, listen to me. You eat a little bit of that, and you can have some. And I will get you some sauce. Jordan. You do not play with your food and you do not throw your fork. Are you listening to me? Jordan, are you listening to me? Did she tell you what you put normal for? Yeah, it's bad. So what else have you got to say about the house Are you going to sit down nicely at the table and eat your dinner? <coughs> and we will get you some sauce. <coughs> I'm only doing it because I know how tired he is. <coughs> and he's promised me that he's going to eat some dinner, didn't you? <coughs> Can you stop crying, please? <coughs> ben is, ben, listen, Ben is trying to eat. But that is all you get, no more. No more sauce, OK? Look how red it's going. Because of what's been happening earlier. You'd have been like, sauce. I'm going to go home. Would you try a little bit more of your dinner before I know that go feeling. to bed, please? No, uh, I Should we? I know. I know. I always frenzy that shit, but no. I'll see if I can. Jordan, no. No. Right, you're going to bed now. I just told you not yeah, to throw I, your I food. Would. I don't yeah. Want to yeah, I would, mate. I'd just do it now. Take your dinner away and do it. Thank you. <coughs> down. Get down. <coughs> Get up. Carry him if you have Get to. Get up. <coughs> I thought you were on the Well, you got him up anyway. Did you hear him? Get up. And he's up, look. You've got to stop being so silly, Jordan. Come on, in. I say the word and you're like, no. Uh, no, not yet, darling. Eat some more chips up, please, at least. I'll give you some more pop if you eat two more chips. Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you want a tissue? You've got to stop being so silly. You have been a fantastic little boy all week and you were letting yourself down. I know you've got no idea what I'm telling you. Last night, Ben made a breakthrough with his food phobia when he ate some carrot for dinner. But tonight, he suffered a setback, leaving his chips untouched. And with Jordan okay. sent to bed early following his mealtime tantrum, lift. the day ends on an unfortunate low for lift, both the Jameses lift, lift, lift, lift, lift, and the Howans. Right. It's bedtime, and while Jordan and Ben are already fast asleep, Sarah Archer is reading lots a bedtime story to, to Kian. And lots of exciting Tonight, places. she must once again settle well, Kian using the rapid return technique. But although it board. proved to be incredibly effective yesterday, she's still anxious about repeating the success of last night. There? Mommy, a kiss good night, sweetheart. <laughs> Mommy, a kiss. Come here. Mommy, a kiss. <coughs> Love you. Good night, and I'll see you in the morning. After returning him to bed just once, Sarah is able to leave the room with Kian settled in his own bed.
A successful Sarah joins Shane outside, with Sam Kean still very much on her mind. At the moment, I'm trying not to check. Mm. And obviously, I know things are different at home, yes. Mm. I, probably at home, yeah. I won't go in and kerfuffle around him. Just pop your head. But I will go in and check. Mm. Do you think that bed's all right we've got? Yeah, I think it's much better, to be honest with you. You like it? Yeah, I do. I thought, honestly, I'm not just saying it. I think it's much better. Is it? Yeah, it's yeah. old. No. I know it's got, but I suppose they do come with marks on them, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, no, but it makes you feel like you're chucking something good away. But mm. no, that's fine. No, I He can stick his night, stickers on. Last night, and he said about how... I said, is, it, is your bed cool for you? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. so, yeah, I'm happy with it. I know it's, it doesn't happen, but I expect to go out here on Friday. With it all with done, him, dusted, so... With him, yeah. not even getting out of bed once and crying. Mm. But I know that's not going to happen. No. And even to however good-willed I am, or I'm going to be, I think, well, am I going to let it lapse? Am I, once I get home, think... You know, because I'm going to be there. Tomorrow on the House of Tiny Tearaways. I made him go through all this pain and withdrawals from the heroin, and I'm withdrawing him again. <laughs> <laughs>